All right, guys. Uh, well, it is October 1, 2018. It is 10.46 p.m. And in 14 minutes, remnants of Tropical Storm Rosa will be hitting Arizona. 90% chance of rain. I got that from this mainstream media publication. Um, nope, wrong one. Oh, where is it? Here we go. Okay, uh, this tells you what you are to expect from Rosa. Expect, which means it's coming, right? But remnants already, remnants uh, dropped rain in the valley overnight intermittent showers during the day today parts of the valley have already seen almost a half inch of rain and that's just a preview of what's to come remnants remnant is like uh, oh well when we talk about remnants of a storm we're talking about you know the tail end um, so remnants now begin storms and remnants end storms. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. It is what remains, not what is beginning. The, the mainstream media reporting on, well, I would say no doubt for many years, but Irma, Florence, now Rosa, that this abject incomprehensible absurdity that's coming out of mainstream media, how this is not begging questions in Americans' minds, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, the, and, you know, I am grateful to people like In Truth By Grace. This video, the one that she posted before this video, she pointing out very uh, clear obviouses that don't seem to be really um, much in play anymore. You know, that saying, you know, the obvious goes right over your head. It's going over the majority of Americans' heads. Now, Florence, like Rosa. Category 4, to hit the Carolinas. Whoops, boom, drops down to Category 1. Hangs out, sits in the North Carolina coast. A ah, day, day and a half. Then it decides, I'm going to go down to Myrtle Beach. Check it out. Oh, no damage occurs. You know, Wilmington sure did get flooded. New Bern sure did get flooded. Um, trees, you know, some trees down. But hurricanes, the main characteristic of a hurricane is high winds. We don't see roofs blown off. Um signs blown down, mailboxes still erect and strong. Sign okay, so it's a category one, but what is mainstream media reporting? It's reporting. Now, these hurricanes are associated with massive flooding. That doesn't beg questions. A hurricane, Florence, so it just goes down south after sitting, you know, on the coast of North Carolina, goes down south, uh, hangs out for a while, then it goes through uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, it's Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, goes through Pennsylvania, goes through New York, goes on out into the Atlantic, nothing stops these hurricanes anymore. 
they just come right on and become Lando canes, I guess. And But it goes out into the Atlantic and mainstream media actually reports that shreds of Florence is refueling and it's going to refuel back into a hurricane and come right on back and hit the Carolinas. Wow! That's not what we've seen hurricanes do. Are we going to claim it's climate change, global warming? What has happened to our country? Uh, you know, the dumbing down, whew, it's, it didn't just start with the younger generations. There's something terrifically wrong. Hurricane Rosa, Category 4, develops off the coast of Mexico, and mainstream media is reporting that it's going to be slamming into Arizona. All right. Thank you, In Truth by Grace. Arizona is not known for hurricanes hitting it. They have their monsoon season, which In Truth by Grace points out it ended the 30th yesterday. But it wouldn't be a surprise, you know, that they would be getting on October 1 a monsoon. Okay. But no, they're getting a hurricane and it's going to slam into this desert state. But the same thing, Category 4, mainstream media hyping it up. And then, oh, it suddenly weakens. But it's sitting on the coast. And if you've been watching the satellites, and then when it finally comes into view on radar, it's, it has none of the characteristics of a hurricane. What is this rectangle here? Um, and I'm really grateful, and Truth by Grace got this because she must have been on Intelecast when I was on Intelecast today. And I wanted to post a video. My computer stalled out, crashed, and I couldn't capture it. In Truth by Grace, thank you. Right angled precipitation? Are you kidding me? Um, this is not how Mother Nature works. Not at all. Not at all. But you still see frequencies. Uh, all right. So even if you showed this to anyone, you know, that didn't even know how to read, you know, uh, these, these images, right? You tell them, okay, the green, right? It means rain. So a Yuma, um, and this area, it, it's getting rain. And if it goes into yellow and orange and then red and then purple, means a whole lot of rain and a massive storm, right? So you tell them that the green is precipitation. They would be able to see that something is not quite right with these very defined lines fanning out through the precipitation. They might even ask, what is that? Why does that happen if it's just rain? Well, it happens when you have extremely low frequencies that are manipulating, modifying, or steering the storm. Man's hand. Signature of man's hand in the storm. The right angles you can still see at the edges. Okay. Uh, but, but in looking at mainstream media, trying to find out, also going through YouTube, which, you know, is really, it's concerning me now, um, that I can't seem to come up it, with my searches. And I do consider myself to be a decent researcher. I cannot tell you the difficulty I am having trying to find what I'm looking for. So I, I really do believe that other states have been experiencing flash flooding this week. Maybe Nebraska, um, maybe some more, you know, up 
north, the northeast. And I'm trying to remember where I saw uh, possibilities of flash flooding on satellites and radar. So I can't remember, but I'm not seeing it. And look at all, uh, I'm going to interject here, look at all of these frequencies that are going through. You've got these extending right on into Arizona, and you also have frequencies coming out of the Phoenix area, and they're crossing, these frequencies are crossing, and that portends uh, destruction. But here we have the, the, the signatures are magnificent in this. I believe they don't care. They just don't care because they know that the majority of Americans just, they, they've stopped thinking. They have given up thinking. Uh, they'll accept anything. Uh, and so they can do anything. They can say anything. They can report. They can even report uh, contradictory reports. It doesn't matter because nothing begs questions anymore. In Americans brains okay so um, I'm glad that in truth by grace did uh, go to the National Hurricane Center and um, you know she which is what because of the, the, the reporting has been really Washington Post is reporting that the hurricane hit this weekend in Arizona. Okay, Hurricane Rosa hit Arizona and Mexico over the weekend. Really? Okay, I didn't know that. Um, the storm will continue to affect the U.S. Southwest early this week. They're saying the hurricane hit. They're not, they, they say the hurricane not the tropical storm. The hurricane hit Arizona. Well, hurricanes don't hit Arizona. Maybe they just are, you know, doing that again just to see if they're going to get a response from their readers. I don't know. But, um, I didn't even know where the hell this storm was. And I started looking at the National Hurricane Center. And what I did want to report was here, rainfall, uh, Rosa is expected to produce the following total rainfall accumulations through Wednesday morning. Baja, California, northwestern Sonora, three to six inches, isolated 10 inches. Central and southern Arizona, uh, two to four inches, isolated six inches. That's a lot of rain for this desert. Um, and six inches, six inch totals are possible in the mountains. And they have also been reporting how because of your drought, that is also man-made, um, not a lot of the ground is going to be soaking up this rainfall. So if it's in the mountains, where is that rain going to go? Anyway, the rest of the desert southwest, central Rockies, Great Basin, one to two inches, isolated four inches. These rainfall amounts may produce life-threatening flash flooding. Dangerous debris flows and landslides are also possible in mountainous terrains. But it doesn't even look like a tropical storm. It looks like that, that, that you got rain. Um, I've seen this, you know, not so often because you don't get much rain. Uh, but this is what we are supposed to just accept. That this, this little green right here is going to be creating massive flooding. Oh, not just in Arizona. Maybe this portion will create the massive flooding. But we did learn from the Washington Post that the hurricane hit over the weekend.
Well, I did say it was going to be going into Colorado. Guess what? Remnants will be going into Colorado. Remnants. Remnants of these hurricanes. Hurricanes hit a coastal area, and you might get some rain, you know, uh, inland. Now they go right through the country, and nobody even questions it. Well, you guys question it, but where the hell, what the hell happened to the American people? Um, Tropical storm rose a timeline. What to expect in Arizona? Well, if the hurricane hit Arizona over the weekend, you would think that they would be reporting on all of the destruction. No, they're reporting, and th this is updated two hours ago, reporting on what is to come. You want to know how the storm started? Remnants. Remnants don't start. Remnants end. Remnants brought steady showers to the valley overnight, intermittent showers during the day. Parts of the valley have already seen half inch of rain, and that's just a preview. Remnants are the preview now. Remnants are what remains of, you know, the whatever. That, it, it's like the end. Now it's the beginning. Remnants begin and end. Uh, storms. The main batch of rain. This is how they're reporting. The main batch of rain will move in tonight and into Tuesday. A flash flood watch is already in effect until Wednesday at 5 a.m. Monday evening, expect 90% chance of rain starting around 9 p.m. Overnight Monday to Tuesday, that's the main event. So Washington Post is actually reporting that the hurricane hit Arizona over the weekend. The main event is to come Tuesday. How do you make sense of this? I, I, I don't know how to make sense of this. Tuesday afternoon, circulation from Rosa should be right over Phoenix by this point. Circulation from Rosa. Would, is that the eye of the weakened hurricane slash tropical storm? Whew. Well, guess what? <laughs> now we have remnants east uh, Idaho. <clears throat> remnants of Hurricane Rosa, still calling it a hurricane, remnants of Hurricane Rosa could bring very dangerous flash floods to east Idaho. The tropical storm that weakened before it made landfall, they still report it like this. Okay, well, we know that man can create flash flooding, and we've seen the flash flooding occur. Certainly, 2018 was a big flash flooding event all over the country. So many areas got destroyed by flash flooding. So it won't have anything to do with this geoengineered storm. And you can see the geoengineering right smack in your face, the periphery, all of the, the toxic spraying, the lines, crisscrossing. Um, but now, it, you know, it's just now these storms just go on endlessly. Yeah, it's uh, and they do create the kind of rain that is very spotty, which is really interesting. I don't, guys, you know, this is what. Mexico. Flooding is now an issue in Mexico after a violent storm blew through there. Take a look at this video. Out of Cabo San Lucas, see the water sweeping that van away like it weighs nothing? 
Well, there are also reports of damage to buildings here. This storm coming as Hurricane Rosa strengthens just offshore. <laughs> below to every video you can check them out this is uh, did I show you this one Arizona Arizona which makes perfect sense Washington Post yep they reported the hurricane hit Arizona over the weekend so this makes sense but it doesn't really make sense though they did claim that the remnants were already causing a half inch of rain. Uh, this too is Mexico. The the flash flooding, and I I also I don't know if I mentioned, but I do. I think it's important again. In truth, by grace points out that the national hurricane there. Uh, location is not the location uh, that's what's happening now they can say anything National Hurricane Center can report whatever the hell they want because most people are not like in truth by grace that will actually calculate the National Hurricane Center's location and, and prove them wrong. The whole thing is just an abject farce. They claim that these are hurricanes. Then they weaken into tropical storms, but they're going to be bringing an awful lot of rain. And they can cause this flash flooding. And they just put those words into people's brains and in their minds. And they think, oh, wow, we did have massive flash flooding from the hurricane. It makes, it makes sense to them that a hurricane would bring that about. But they don't even think about, well, what the hell is Arizona getting a hurricane for? I, I, how is that, you know, how does that happen? Heavy rains bring street flooding to Galveston. Um... I didn't even watch this, but I saw it in my search and saw Texas, state of disaster. All right, Texas has been having more flash flooding, and it's very hard to get the information. I could not find the flood. I put in flash flooding, uh, Texas, Houston, um, different kinds of searches, and I came up with only one video right here, Daily Mail. The rain came down fast and hard in Texas. Storms pounded the Houston area, causing flash flooding and a big headache for drivers. This rain is just like too much. I don't know what's going on. It's been raining all week and this is not getting any better. Heavy winds partially knocked down a circus tent in Brazoria County, sending hundreds running for safety. When the tent came, it didn't come all the way down, but I seen like, I seen it cave in a little bit. And it was over the top of the bleachers. I seen like the tent over the top of the bleachers, but everybody was in a panic, so they they pretty much ran out of there before before anybody got hurt. The strong storms flooded homes and left thousands without power. The fast rising waters caught many people off guard. This man had to stand on a bench to wait for the bus when rains overtook the sidewalk. Okay. Um. That was the only thing that I came across until I came across this video, which Texas state of disaster. So there is so much happening in our country that we don't know about. You know, I got this email from a subscriber today who lives in a small town in New York, and she sent me this video, and this is a video of uh, the chemtrails in this small town in New York you can see the chemtrails also over to the right but look at this sky look at this sky now if people are just going to ignore what is right in their face 
a sky that has all of these very fine lines, but it looks like lattice work. You know, like somebody just threw up a sheet of white lattice up into the sky. This, this can't be denied, but somehow people do it. But she said in the small town, I posted the videos on the tornadoes. Yes, we're now being told that New England is Tornado Alley. And I posted videos on this. Tornadoes hit Connecticut, New York, New Jersey in May. I believe New Jersey, but definitely New York and Connecticut. Uh, areas that I'm very familiar with that don't get tornadoes. And mainstream media was coming out saying, it's not unusual. This is what the new tornado alley and what what do you do with this what do you do with this when people just accept it but in her small town what did she say she's she's told she in the email she said in may we had an ef2 tornado uh in the mountains caused total destruction, power out for six days, entire town had no electricity. And then, I, I think it was a she, I'm sorry, uh, she or he. When they spray heavily, they either get rain or it's extremely hot. And I just want to say to you, um, are you noticing right before it, gets extremely hot. Are you noticing a lot of black crap in your sky? The black carbon dust, which is uh, used to create localized atmospheric heating. So, you know, look, we have a population that really is profoundly um, screwed up, to say the least. And it really is much easier to just keep accepting uh, lie after lie, to keep living your lies, uh, to never change, to just keep lying. Uh, but it creates a tremendous amount of destruction. You know, one of the things that I love about In Truth by Grace is her love of truth. I don't, I don't have to um, have the same beliefs as somebody else. I don't have to agree with everything that they say to have a tremendous amount of respect and the way that respect for others develops in me is their love of truth. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we're always right. You can be wrong, but you, due to that love of truth, and I'm not talking about a sentimental love, I am talking about a love that compels you to be on a very narrow road because there's not a lot of people in six years of my being on YouTube and I left a response to a subscriber who left a comment yesterday and she and I cannot remember verbatim what the comment was but part of the comment was I love the truth so much and I can't remember um, I haven't, in six years, read that. And I, there are very, very few people who express their love of truth. And I may express it differently. And like In Truth by Grace is talking about how the people who accept these lies you know, she uses um, language that I wouldn't, but In Truth by Grace is Christian, and I can't remember exactly what she said, but something about judgment. Um, those who accept lies are in God's judgment. Oh, sorry, In Truth by Grace, uh, but, you know, I, I don't, 
I don't speak that language. But I feel those who accept lies are more dangerous than the liar. You know, liars just lie. It's what they do. How they and they'll never change. Unfortunately, I, I've had so many in my life. And you call them out on their lies and they just lie more. And then they start recreating a whole, you know, manufacturing a reality that is an abject lie. But you're left with how there's nothing left anymore. You've got to walk away because there's no getting through. Because the more you stay, the more drama, chaos, confusion, and betrayal comes. Those who don't call out liars, those who just accept the lies, they're far more dangerous because they're the ones who allow the lie to flourish. Allow the liar to just continue. And, well, if they're never stopped, then you ultimately manifest a meaninglessness, a, a joke of a society. I mean, it's like, Everything is just rendered meaningless. And it's profoundly upsetting for those who love the truth to have to live this. But it's those who continue to lie and those who accept. You know, because if, if we didn't accept lies, the lie would die. It's the acceptance of the lie. You know, that just, the liar puts out the lie like a, it's a seed. And all of those who accept that, they water that seed. And you end up just manifesting what we're living. And I really, I need people in my life that love the truth. when it literally like captures you and does throw you on a very narrow road. But it's those who really see how dangerous lies are. It, they just destroy everything. They create so much confusion and chaos and uh, nobody knows what the hell, you know, uh, how do you, uh, you know, if they persist and go on and on and on as they have done from the start of this country, right on up to this very day. Everything just gets so big, so overwhelming. You just get so saturated in all of, all of it. And, and it's like people, what do you do? How do you even begin to repair the damage? It's well, it's impossible when you have so many people who don't love the truth. Who don't love the truth. So, anyway, um, sorry for going on. I do go on, and, and I really am sorry. Um, we have an awful lot of destruction going on. You know, and after getting that email from that subscriber, I went back and I looked at some of the videos and tried to see if, what was happening in, in Connecticut and New York and these small towns, if they were actually tornadoes. I don't believe that they were tornadoes. I believe that they were creating a lot of micro and macro bursts because if you do do the research, you can just put in, you know, tornado, um, Connecticut, New York, and then filter it, you know, down to uh, this past year. You'll see a lot of videos. And in watching those videos, the damage was not characteristic of tornadoes. 
You didn't see a path of damage, of destruction, like tornadoes create. You saw such unbelievable spotty destruction, and that's not how tornadoes operate. They come down, and they move along, and the direction they're moving, they take out what's in their path. You had a tree topple over onto a house here. You had another, you had one house that <laughs> literally flipped. And I think it was in Palmer. And I'm going to put you on hold. It was Carmel, New York. Okay, this is the tornado. But look at this house. Whoa. It just. It just it took it right off its foundation and dropped it on its head. But if you go through the videos, and I did go through a lot of them, you will see a tree down here, a tree down there, a tree on a house. Uh, you know, it's this is not. So they just call things tornadoes and bring about destruction, and people believe it. They call these storms hurricanes and bring about massive flash flooding inland you know on up north into Idaho and people believe it I don't know how to get people to start thinking again or caring that's the real heartache that I know that a lot of you also feel. We're going to be seeing destruction. They're going to be calling it something and it's going to be very obvious that it's not that something that they're calling it. But most people will just believe what they hear from their authority figures. Wow! Never did I imagine I would be living what I'm living. All links are below.